Hello and welcome to our course. This is the first lecture of Intermediate Algebra. I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Callie Dompierre. I'll be your instructor and I'm going to show you what I have. So on Blackboard, I provided you PDFs of the notes that go along with each lecture that I'm going to give. It is very important that you take notes. You don't have to print off these notes and take the notes on top of the paper that I'm writing on. You can take notes however you want, but don't just watch the video without taking notes. It's very important. Um, each lecture then goes along with a My Math Lab assignment. You are also welcome to uh, open up the video and then open up My Math Lab and do it side by side. So as I teach a concept, you do that concept in My Math Lab if that. Um, if you want. I have a calculator, mine's a TI-82 because it was just like the one that my grocery store sells. I, If you need a calculator, get a TI-30XS because it is a TI calculator. It does the, um, it does fractions really simply. It's just the easiest to use right out of the box and it's only $18. So if you need a calculator, it is called the TI-30XS. But I am using a TI-82, and if you have a TI-84, um, you probably have similar buttons to mine. That is all. Let me, I'm going to pause it so that I can change to the note screen. All right, so this is what our um, classroom is going to look like. I'm, you're just going to be looking at my hand very frequently, I apologize. And uh, I'll just be working along, explaining as I go. If anything is coming up for you as you're watching this first video, just go ahead and pause the video, send me an email. I would like to answer your questions, make you feel comfortable, make you feel confident about this. All right. You are allowed notes on exams. The notes that you are allowed, ooh, let me pause again. All right, sorry for the choppiness on day one. All right, the notes that you are allowed uh, you need to fit on this three by five note card, front and back, however you want to. If you want to like print it off in the tiniest font possible, that is perfectly fine. So what might be helpful as well as you go through these notes is if something really sticks out to you or you continue to see it on my math lab, just have a three by five card or something, some piece of paper that is three by five um, and write stuff down on that for each unit so that you are ready for the exam. So we'll have homework, we'll have quizzes, and we'll have exams. Make sure you look at the course calendar or within my math lab, we'll have all of the due dates for those assignments. Um, when we are doing the homework, the homework's all one grade. So it doesn't, your homework grade doesn't go into Blackboard until the end of the, um, the end of the unit, but you still have to follow the due dates for those assignments, even though the grade isn't immediately going into Blackboard. And for the exams, I will also provide an exam study guide. So that's also another good time to have the note card ready and take notes on anything that comes up for you that you don't understand during the, or that you need to remember, I apologize, that you need to remember during the study guide um, so that you have it handy for the exam. All right, let's get started. 1.2 is our first assignment. We're just gonna be talking about algebraic expressions today, okay? An expression is similar to the word equation, okay? An expression just means that we have variables, a letter, constants, a number, like this, okay? And you can have a sign in between them, addition, subtraction, division. And then when the letter is right next to the number that means multiplication or something taken to a power or to a root a root looks like that okay so algebraic expression the only difference between an expression and an equation is equations have an equal sign so there will be two sides to an equation there'll be instead of just 3x plus 5 it'll be 3x plus 5 equals x equals 0 equals anything. Okay, that would be an equation. And then an expression would be that without the 0, or sorry, without the equal sign. 3x plus 5, that's the difference. An expression does not have an equal sign. 
identify natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational real numbers. I wouldn't worry about this. Okay, this is not an important thing that's going to come up later in the semester. Find the absolute value of a real number. This is important. You do want to understand what an absolute value is. And then the opposite of a number, you're just thinking about changing the sign. Okay, we'll talk about this further. Write phrases, that just means English, right? So you're taking an English sentence or an English phrase and then write it as a math problem. Use numbers, okay? So algebraic expressions include a variable or a letter the letter we use because we don't know what the number is. A constant is a fixed number. Here is a fixed number. Or a letter that represents a fixed number, okay? What it means is it's constant. It's not going to change. 3x, was it a plus 5? I wrote that. I circled it right, right on the plus. So in 3x plus 5, when x equals 2 becomes 3 times 2 plus 5, right? We replace the x with a 2. The 3 doesn't change. The 5 doesn't change. If we said x is now 0, it's now 3 times 0 plus 5. So when you see constant, I want you to think of does not change, OK? A constant is a number that does not change, whereas a variable changes. And we don't know the variable, so that's why we're using, or sorry, we don't know what number it is, so we're using a letter instead of the number. If this is all overwhelming, don't worry about it, all right? Take it with a grain of salt. Just answer the questions that come up in my math lab. You don't have to perfectly understand all of this. This was just to introduce you, okay? An algebraic expression, same thing up here, right? An algebraic expression is formed by numbers and variables connected by the operation. So an operation, means we are adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, raising to a power. Raising to a power is this one. This is raising to a power. And then taking roots. There, I didn't put an example of taking roots. Taking root would be the square root of nine. Okay, the square root of nine is three. That's an operation that we did on the number nine. To evaluate, evaluate just means solve, okay? To solve an algebraic expression, substitute the number or each variable into the expression and then just simplify the result. Simplify also just means solve, okay? Get as close as you can to something you understand. We can't solve it without a sign but we can simplify it by combining like terms and evaluate it by substituting a value in place of the variable. Page two, example one. All right, so if you already know this, right? If not everybody coming in here with the same amount of math knowledge, if you already know this, don't write it down. Don't take all the notes I take, take the notes that you need to take. Don't take zero notes, don't take every note, okay? Do what you need to do. Um, write down what you want to reference later. So this says the area of a rectangle with length L and width W is LW. When they're right next to each other, squeezed up against each other, it means multiply. The area is length times width. Find the area of a rectangle with length 5. L equals 5. Width 3.2. W equals 3.2, okay? So this was English, right? This is what we were talking about, taking English, translating it into math or into numbers and symbols, right? The operation, the word for addition is right there. The symbol for addition is the plus sign. The word subtraction is there. The symbol is the minus sign. Multiplication, that's the symbol. Division, that's the symbol, or just the division bar is the symbol. Um, taking roots, the symbol for that is this one. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking the sentence, the word addition, changing it to a symbol. Good. So the area is, is often means equals. 
Okay. The area of a rectangle with length and width is L times W. Area equals L times W. Find the area of a rectangle with length five and width 3.2. So what that means is we're going to take that number five, and we're going to substitute it. We're going to take that 3.2 and we're going to substitute it. Now we have, still have A because we don't know what A is. Maybe we're solving for A. L is five and W is 3.2. I put, when I'm substituting in any variable, so this five is for the L, when I'm substituting in any variable, I put a parentheses around that letter because I want, I don't want to get confused, okay? We're multiplying five by 3.2, but sometimes when you don't put parentheses around it, it'll get confusing, okay? So five meters times 3.2 meters is, just use your calculator. Ah, and don't put a minus sign or a negative sign after um, your multiplication problem. Five times 3.2 is 16, okay? Example two, evaluate B minus 5A when A equals four and B equals 35. Notice that there is no equal sign, all right? But we can simplify it. So we have B, I'm just gonna write it again, minus five, a. And you can even start putting the letters in parentheses if you want, okay? But we know that B is 35 and that A is 4. So I'm going to change that to 4 minus 5. No, I'm not. B is 35. So I'm going to say 35 minus 5 times 4, okay? Without the parentheses, Possibly, right? We could say 35 minus 5, 4. It's not 35 minus 54, right? It's 35 minus 5 times 4. 5, 4, just it's like 5, 4 in the calculator, but 5 times 4, it knows to multiply. Okay, that's why I like the parentheses. So we're doing 35 minus 5 times 4 is 20, right? And you can start adding equal signs when you know you can solve it for, or when you, because you know that 35 minus five times four is the same as 35 minus 20. And you know that 35 minus 20 is 15, right? And so you can put an equal sign yourself if you want, because you are the one simplifying it. Good. Use parentheses when your letter is next to something would be my recommendation. All right, we are moving on to opposites. You know the opposite of a number because on the number line, it is the same distance as the number it is opposite to, <laughs> the original number, but in the opposite direction, okay? So a number line is just a line, and each point on the line is associated with a number, okay? You have positive numbers going this way. You have negative numbers as you go this way or smaller going this way, bigger going this way. Zero is the middle of your number line, good? Any number you can imagine is on a number line. Even though we don't have decimals marked here, you can still find 1.5, you can still find negative 4.8, it's still on there. Every number you can imagine is there, okay? You can take the square root of three, 1.7320, you can find that and put that on the number line the square root of three. You can take a whole expression if you want and put it on the number line if there are no letters. Good? All right, so. Oh, did you know that zero is neither negative nor positive? It's what separates the positive numbers from the negative numbers, but it is itself neither negative or positive. All right, let's quickly talk about the sets of numbers, but it's not the most important thing today, okay? So. Natural numbers are the counting numbers. We don't include zero in the natural numbers, okay? Zero is included in whole numbers. Whole numbers are all counting numbers or natural numbers plus zero. So they're positive, all the positive whole numbers. Here are all the positives. And they are not fractions, they are not decimals, okay? 
These are the positives and zero. So the only difference between natural numbers and whole numbers is whole numbers includes the number zero. So whole numbers are all natural numbers plus zero. And then integers are all negative and positive. Negative zero and positive numbers. Okay. There are no decimals. There are no fractions unless it's a fraction like four divided by two that's actually itself a whole number, right? But eight divided by three is not going to be on there because it's not a whole number. So no fractions, no decimals. The part, so these are called sets. Set notation is these brackets. The objects of a set are called its members or elements. This might be on the exam, okay? This ellipsis right here. This ellipsis means it goes on in that way forever, okay? So when you wanna list every integer in the world, you can't, right? So you're just gonna put maybe three examples, and then you're gonna put dot, dot, dot to say in this way forever. Same in this direction. It's gonna be negative four, negative five, negative six. I can think, I can keep following the pattern forever, okay? Roster form means we list the elements in the set. And then set builder notation means we just describe the set. Okay, so roster shows the set. Set builder notation describes the set. These are sets, okay? These sets are in roster form. <clears throat> I'll give you an example of set builder notation. X such that X is a natural number between three and eight. All right, I just described a set of numbers. If I described it, that's set builder notation. And then I'm going to put that same group in roster form. Roster form is up here. That same group is just gonna include the numbers, right? It's between three and eight, so it's not gonna include three, it's gonna include four. We only have natural numbers, right? So four, five, six, and seven. We're gonna stop there. It's between three and eight, so it doesn't include three or eight, okay? So that's the same um, set this one describes the set, so it's set builder notation. This one shows me the set, so it's roster form, okay? If I wanted to say another set builder notation example, all all whole numbers. Okay, I know we already have that right here, but I'm gonna just show you again. So all whole numbers, and then my roster form of that same group, the whole numbers start at zero. So I'm gonna start at zero, one, two, but there's no between, there's no until, okay? It goes forever. So I'm gonna stop writing and I'm gonna put dot, dot, dot in that way forever. Okay, so that's how we're using dot, dot, dot. It's very important that you understand that, it might be on the exam, okay? There's a difference between this, this is just the whole numbers between zero and three. Oh, between negative one and four, right? And then this is all whole numbers. I just know some people get it wrong on the exam if um, they don't know exactly the difference with the ellipses. I know I over explained that one. All right, so write each set in roster form. These are in set builder, we're translating them into roster form. X such that X is a whole number between one and eight. So I'm just going to um, put my bracket down between one and eight. It doesn't include one. So I'm going to start at two, three, four, five, six, and seven. 
and I'm done. X is a natural number greater than 100. No shame. Looking back at natural numbers, it's just the counting numbers, okay? Natural number greater than 100. So we're going to start at 101, 102, 103. I don't want to stand here any longer. I don't want to spend my time any longer doing this. I'm not even standing. Um, so I'm just going to put ellipses. Continue in this manner forever. All right. So example four, is this true or false? Determine whether each statement is true or false. Zero. This symbol is used to represent elements of a set. Okay. Is zero a part of the set X is a natural number? Let's go back to what natural numbers are. Natural numbers do not include zero. So we're going to say zero is not. Zero is a part of the set of natural numbers. That is what they're asking. Is zero a part of this group of natural numbers? We're going to say it is not. It is false because natural numbers do not include zero. So this is false. Nine is not a part of the group four, six, eight, 10. So if we look at the pattern, we're counting by twos. Four, no five, six, no seven, eight, no nine, 10. Nine is not a part of the group four, six, eight, 10. That is true. Good. Okay. Again, we're talking about groups or sets of numbers. Anytime you hear set, you can also just think of the word group. Real numbers are all rational and irrational numbers. So here we have real numbers. Within real numbers, we have rational. And then we have everything else, okay? And inside rational, we have those other groups of integers. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even on the... Uh, within rational, we have integers. Within integers, we have whole numbers. And within whole numbers, we have natural numbers, right? And if you can tell by my voice, I am looking at notes for this because I don't even know this, okay? I reference notes. It doesn't, it's not, it's good to know. It's good to understand it. You don't need to memorize it, all right? Real numbers are everything the big circle. Rational numbers are anything that can be expressed as a quotient of integers. Anything that can be expressed as a fraction is what a quotient of integers means, okay? When written as a decimal, the decimal will end or repeat, okay? For example, eight divided by three. Uh, <laughs> why did I pick that both times? It goes on as six, 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 six. It repeats, okay? It rounds off to seven because that's where my calculator stops. All right, five, nine, five, 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 five. Okay, and then it rounds. Um, the square root of three does not end and does not have a pattern. One half, that fraction ends, okay? So I like to think of irrational numbers are usually, um, they usually involve the radical symbol and some, Sometimes when you use the radical symbol, you get a perfect square, it's called. Sometimes you don't. If you don't get a perfect square, it's usually an irrational number, okay? Pi is an irrational number. Anything else that I can think of? Pi, square to three. Yeah, those are irrational numbers. Rationals are anything you can write as a fact fraction that repeats. One third two-fifths. It either repeats or it ends, right? Okay. And obviously the real numbers like five, negative two. Those are all rational numbers because rational numbers includes integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. Irrational. These guys are over here. There's no subgroup of irrational. There are many subgroups of rational. All right. Is this true? Zero is a real number. Let's look at real numbers. Real includes rational, integers, whole numbers, and natural. Yes. True. Every integer is a rational number. 
every integer is a rational number. True. Square root of 3 is a rational number. I specifically put it over here, but let's look at it. The square root of 3 does not repeat, does not end. So I'm going to say it is not a rational number. That is false. Okay. Absolute values. Sorry, I jumped the gun. I thought we were talking about inverses when we saw that number line, but it, we didn't. Now we're talking about absolute values without talking about inverse, but it's coming, okay? Absolute value. The absolute value of a real number A denoted by, right? Denoted by the absolute value bars, the little absolute value jail, is the distance between whatever that is and zero on the number line, okay? The absolute value of negative four is four. So let's look at this. This is just negative four. Right, But if I put absolute value bars around that negative 4, now it's the absolute value of negative 4. That's the difference, OK? So when we are asking for the absolute value, we want to know how far it is from 0. 4 is equal to 4, right? The absolute value of 4 just says, how far away is 4 from 0? 1, 2, three, four. It is four units from zero, right? So the absolute value of four is four. Similarly, negative four is also four units from zero. The absolute value of negative four is also one, two, three, four units from zero. Okay. So <clears throat> that means you need to take everything inside the absolute value bars and count it from zero. Okay. Uh, positive five is five away from zero. If we count, you're measuring. Okay. Absolute values is always distance. Distance cannot be negative, right? You don't look at a ruler and look at, or the negative side of the ruler. You don't say, oh, since I'm going from left to right, it's negative. When I'm going right to left, it's positive, right? I don't go from my house to school. I don't go, hmm, there's positive three miles. And then when I go home, it's not negative three miles, right? I still went another positive three miles. So just think about absolute value. It is always positive or zero, but it's not because we're just making it zero or sorry, we're just making it positive. It's because we're measuring the length. The length is always positive, right? We don't care which direction it goes. We're just counting how far we went. All right, so from seven to zero, it's seven units. It doesn't matter if we're talking about inches, feet, millimeters. Negative six, it's six. Negative four fifths, it's four fifths of one from zero. Zero is zero units away from zero, okay? I will take this opportunity though to talk about negative fractions. negative four-fifths, okay? There are many ways to write it because all negative four-fifths is uh, fraction. Oh, no, sorry. Hmm. Pause this. Sorry, I couldn't remember where that was on my calculator. All right, I'm going to put something into the calculator. Eight-ninths, perhaps. I'm sorry, we're doing four-fifths. Let's do four-fifths. Four-fifths. Okay, four fifths is four fifths. Point eight. Point eight, when you put it as a fraction, becomes four fifths. Okay, so all a fraction is, is you're taking the top and you're dividing it by the bottom. All right, so when we think about negative four fifths, we can put the negative sign with the four, we can put the negative sign with the five. Or we can put the negative sign way out in front of the whole thing. In each of those ways, we get the same answer. So negative 4 fifths is 0.8 or 0 0.8 as a decimal. You can write it as the negative is out in front like this. The negative is up here with the 4 and there's a positive 5. Or there's a positive 4 and a negative 5. Any way you write it, you're going to get a negative answer. 
All right. The only way you can't do it is a negative four divided by negative five because a negative divided by negative is positive. But it doesn't matter where you see this. If it's in the middle, if it's up top, or if it's on the bottom, it's all equal to the same number. Okay. And division is just dividing. Or sorry, <laughs> fractions are just dividing. It is true that division is just dividing, but that is relevant. Okay. Opposites. Opposites are two numbers that are the same distance from zero, but in opposite sides of zero, okay? So the opposite of a number A is the number negative A. Don't overthink it, all right? For every number, for every real number A, negative negative A equals A, okay? Two negatives become a positive. If you have minus a negative, you put make turned into a big plus sign, okay? When you add the opposites, you get back to zero, okay? We're looking at this number line. Go ahead. And blanker number line. Slightly blanker. All right. If we're looking at this number line, negative five and five are opposite inverses. All right. They're both five units away from zero, but they went in opposite directions. That's what they mean by opposite additive inverses. All right. The opposite of negative 35 is. 35, I won't put an equal. The opposite of each number, negative 35's opposite is 35. 12's opposite is negative 12. Negative 311's opposite is positive 311's. 1 1.9 is negative 1.9, okay? Don't flip these upside down. Just make them, if they're positive, make them negative. If they're negative, make them positive. All right. Translating phrases, addition, we have the word sum means addition, plus means addition, added to, more than, increased by, and total all mean addition. Difference, minus, subtract, less than, decreased by, and less all mean subtract. Product, times, multiply, divided by, of, double, or triple mean multiply. Quotient, divide, shared equally among, ooh, divided by and divided into are all division. So if we're taking those English words and translating them to symbols, um, one second. Yes, I need to make a note, all right? Less than. Less than is not the same as the rest of these because basically what you're saying is um, two minus one is one, right? This was a terrible example. I didn't think when I started with two. Two minus one is one is written as, but if I wanted to write that with the phrase less than, what it's gonna say is one less than two is one, okay? So for less than specifically, you need to flip them, okay? Five decreased by a number. Five decreased by a number. Anytime you have a number, you're just choosing a letter, okay? A number. A number means we don't know it, we're gonna use a letter. Five, we know decreased by is subtraction. Five decreased by a number, the quotient of a number, quotient is division. The quotient of a number and 12. Decreased by is minus, okay? The sum of, I know the sum of means plus, four and twice y. Twice means two times something, okay? The sum of four and twice y. So I have a four and I have a twice y and I'm taking the sum, so I'm adding them, okay? Remember, less than is the one we have highlighted to say we split the order. X less than the product of y and z. We have and, which sometimes means plus, right? But product means multiply. 
the product of y and z looks like this x less than even though the x is up front because it's the one we highlighted the one that we reverse reverse the order okay x is less than the product of y and z all right translate the phrases into algebraic expression three times the difference of a number and ten three times the difference of a number and 10. Sometimes and means plus, but here we're just finishing difference, okay? Three times the difference of a number and 10. The difference of a number and 10 is gonna look like this. And then we're just gonna multiply it by three. You can write it just like that, or you can write it like three times x minus 10. Here we have one fourth, it's a fraction, subtracted from three times a number. Remember a number is always just X or whatever letter you wanna give it. One fourth subtract, ooh, subtracted from. Subtracted from is again backwards. It just wasn't on that list. One fourth is subtracted from three times a number. It's gonna look like that, okay? You can, you're welcome to like put that sentence into Google and see what Google gives you back. You know, if you're not sure, you don't need to memorize each of these phrases, just become familiar with like what makes the most sense, what you think it means. Okay. And that is all for me. That is the end of our first lecture. And again, email me if you had any thoughts, any questions about the semester and about the, this lesson in particular, about the way things work or my expectations, um, but have a good rest of your week and thank you.